I was reading a message on a user forum recently. In this message, I heard a term that I had heard before, but for some reason, I heard the term a little differently this time. The term I heard was, I don't feel like I'm being fed. The person was talking about their experience at their church and was questioning if it was time to move on to a new church home. Now, without having a real conversation with this person on the other end of the, of the comment, I found myself wondering some things. With the disconnect that the internet creates, I was able to spend a little time thinking about some things that this statement could really mean. Now first, when someone says they are not being fed, they usually are concluding that they are expressing some sort of statement that is really directed at their pastor and or their Christian education experience. They are probably directing their comment at the pastor's sermons and or preaching ability. The basic idea is that they are expressing some sort of indirect statement that the preaching teaching just isn't up to par. While this may very well be the case in some instances, I would ask you to continue watching on it as we further explore some other possibilities. There's an old expression that says you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. While risking the possibility that someone watching this could become a little incensed with where I'm going with the use of this expression, I think it's imperative that we broach the subject. How we come prepared to a teaching learning experience can determine how we respond. How many of us arrive at a worship experience with the expectation that our life just might be changed that day? Most of us, if we were honest, will probably admit that we walk into a service on most days with the expectation that we will be entertained, but not changed. So my first challenge for today is to stop at the door this Sunday morning and ask God to do something amazing in your heart that day. Ask God to speak a word to you that will mold you in some way. What would happen if we all entered the church doors expecting that we will experience a life-altering moment while in service or in Sunday school? Showing up to church is easy. Showing up with the allowance for and the expectation of change. Now that's something altogether different. My second challenge is a question. Have you prayed for your pastor this week? Do you dedicate time to praying that your pastor will hear the message that needs to be relayed and be able to do so? More than likely, your pastor is a pretty busy guy or gal. Your pastor may or may not keep regular office hours, but it's likely that his or her clock in and clock out times are very early and or very late regardless. Getting ready for Sunday mornings is likely a race against many other things in their weekly life, so he or she needs all the prayer that they can get. My third challenge for us to think about is drawn from our cultural need to be entertained. And many of us uh, mistakenly view the Sunday morning sermon as something that is in competition with the myriad of entertainment options available to us today. With all the high action, high comedy, high drama, high energy options available to us on TV and the internet, we may find ourselves tempted to see the pulpit as another potential source of entertainment. And now while some pastors may be able to bridge an entertaining style of public address while delivering a message, it would really be unfair to, uh, to, for us to expect that of all pastors as a standard. Performance art isn't essential to delivering a message with incredible impact. My fourth thought is a tough one to consider. There are times that we experience obstructions to the spirit caused by human interaction. We are all imperfect. That statement is unarguable since believing otherwise negates the need for Jesus Christ. Since we are all imperfect yet try to be in relationships with others, it is a natural conclusion that our relationships are imperfect as well. We are going to have times that we disagree with one another. There are going to be times that we get on each other's nerves. These things are going to happen. They have to happen if we believe that Jesus' death and resurrection are central to our beliefs. When we allow those experiences to become a metaphorical wall between us, we are going to cut off the ability to learn and to grow from each other. Think of it as, as a sheet of glass placed over a water trough. The water is in the trough. We can see the water, but there's no way to drink it. Those are my thoughts today. Now, and while Jesus might not have spent a lot of time speaking on pastoral relations and the nature of the pastor church member interaction, I think it might be safe to say that he did address the issue of love. So have you loved your pastor this week? And what I mean is, have you spent time lifting him or her up with an encouraging note, email, or Facebook wall post? Have you prayed for your pastor? Odds are your pastor is a talented person who could likely have succeeded in any number of areas of business, industry, or, or the arts, but they chose to answer the call to ministry. This means that they have chosen the difficult path, but they do it for your sake. Have you fed into the life of your pastor before deciding that you were not yourself being fed? When the loving relationship goes both ways, you might find that the feeding does too. Something to pray about, don't you think? Thanks for watching.